Family of ICC, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. It's under difficult and unfortunate circumstances that I have to send this broadcast out today. A few days ago, the biggest problem we were facing was COVID-19. And as I sent out a message last Monday, I called for a day of fasting and prayer for God to intervene on our behalf for that situation. It's strange that today, as I send this message out, we are facing perhaps even bigger challenges in our community, in our society, in our city, in our country. By now, all of you will be well aware of the violence that has pervaded our communities, the looting, the lawlessness. And I think all of us in some way or the other have been affected, especially in the context of our community. I want to assure you that as of this morning, I've made contact with a great number of our members and all of them are well and safe. I made a particular effort to call those who are in the areas uh, that have been most affected and by God's grace, everyone is well and safe. I've also just taken a drive to church this morning and I want to tell you that George is safe, the church building is safe. The building and the equipment, they're not the most important thing, but I just wanted to give you that peace of mind that so far, by God's grace, everyone is okay, everyone is well. These are uncertain times that we live in. And as I always encourage the members of our church, our standpoint, our yardstick, our foundation cannot be the things in this world, cannot be what government does, cannot be what our own opinions are at times. It has to always be God's word. And so the well-worn verse that is doing the rounds, and rightfully so, at this time is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, where God speaks to King Solomon and says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. In this short time that I have to send out this message, to record this message, I don't want to go into the part of whether this is from the devil or whether this is a judgment from God or any of those things. It's a bit complicated and complex to get into in this short video that I intend to send out. But rather let us focus on the essence of that verse. Before God gives these beautiful comforting words, Solomon prays and says, God, this temple that I have built for you, when we are in trouble and when people turn to this place and pray, hear and answer our prayers, help us. And in the preceding verses to God's response, God basically says, when the nation is in trouble, when you are going through tough times, if my people will look beyond these things, notice God doesn't say, if my people go to war, or if my people plant more seed, or if my people do this to attend to the problem. Because a Christian's focus should never be on the problem, but the God who is the solution. Basically, the lesson that I want us to learn, especially in the context of today, from this verse is this. Let us look beyond the problems. When our families are in danger, when we are tense, nervous, anxious, and afraid, when we are living with gunshots all around us, when some of our men are out there on the streets trying to protect the communities and keep us safe, let us look above these things. Let us not focus on these things and let them drive fear into our hearts. Because God's word says we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith and not fear. So, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Again, I say a well-worn scripture at a time such as this. Let the lesson not be that God's going to heal our land necessarily, but let the lesson be, let our understanding of this verse be, we lift up our eyes above the troubles in our land. And Lord, all we focus on is you. It's not about the Goliath that stands in our way. It's not about Pharaoh who stands in our way. It's not about the Red Sea that stands in our way. It is in the God who can drop giants, who can change governments, who can part oceans, who can move mountains. Our hope and our confidence has always been in you, Lord. In ICC, it has always been, it is now, it forever shall be. For each individual and as a congregation united together, it is all about Jesus. 
I want to thank all those who are doing what they can to stay safe and to keep our community safe. Let us do what we can. Let us put our faith in the ground and trust God. Because people can't get us through this. It is God that will see us through. I love you all very much. Take care. Stay safe. By God's grace, we will get through this together to celebrate what God has done. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask all of you once again to make a sacrifice like I asked you to last week, like many of you did last week. And I'd like to ask that we engage in a day of fasting and prayer tomorrow, Wednesday. You might already be fasting and praying, great. But together as a family, let us unite to make that sacrifice, to go and show desperation before God that says, Lord, you are the answer. You are our hope. You are our confidence. In you, we put our trust. Join with us, not just members of ICC, but all Christians, whoever is watching or listening to this message, tomorrow, Wednesday. Let us join together in a day of fasting and prayer on behalf of our nation. Put your own needs, your own requests on that list as well. But in particular for our nation, let us fast and pray tomorrow. If you would allow me and if you are able to take the time, I would like to pray with you. So if you could bow in prayer today. Father, I bring your people and lay them at your feet. In dangerous, difficult, dark times that we live in, you are our hope, you are our saviour, you are our light. I pray, Lord, that you will keep your people safe. I pray that your hands of protection will be on your people, our property and our possessions. I pray, Lord, that your word will be true. No evil, harm or danger will come close to us. I pray that you will assign guardian angels to encamp around us. Lord, the thief might come to steal, to kill and to destroy, but you are the God who gives us our lives. And so, Lord, I pray for perfect peace. Lord, the storm might be raging all around us, but we will choose to focus on you. We will be still and know that you are God. We pray for our president and those who are in authority. We pray for the police force, for the armed response unit, for the army. We pray for all those who will be enforcing the law, that you will give them wisdom, knowledge and understanding to bring the situation under control. But Lord, at the end of the day, our safety, our hope and our security is in you, mighty God, in you alone. So I pray that you will bring us through this safely, Lord. We will testify about the great things that you have done. And this will, these kinds of situations will draw us closer to you, closer to each other. Help us to appreciate the true meaning of what's important in a greater way. I ask this in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord smile on you and give you peace. May the threefold blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be your portion both this day and forevermore. 